I would like to present a model for melanoma diagnosis by the level of diagnostic difficulty. This is a part one of a two lecture series. There are three levels of difficulty in melanoma diagnosis. The easy melanomas, the medium difficulty, and the hard to diagnose melanomas. In this part one, I'll focus on the easy ones, which I call obvious from the doorway, and the medium difficulty denoted here in yellow. Let's start with the first level of difficulty, the easy melanomas, obvious from the doorway. In this progression models, these would be melanomas that look like this, as we expect them to look based on morphology. Here's an example of a Dora melanoma. This young patient presents with a large plaque, multicolored, obvious outlier on his patient's skin. At close up, we can look at the variegation in colors, the asymmetric shape, multiple criteria from the A, B, C, D criteria. Adorium melanoma, 1.5 millimeter in thickness. Everyone who practices medicine should be able to diagnose such Adorium melanomas, even medical students. What are the signs, as we mentioned? These would be obvious ugly ducklings, outliers on the patient's skin showing multiple criteria from the ABCD signs of asymmetry, border irregularity, color variegation, and a large diameter. Here's another example of a Dore melanoma. This lesion is in, this plaque is an obvious outlier on the patient's skin. A close-up look, it shows multiple colors and asymmetric shape. A Dore melanoma, 0.7 millimeter in thickness. Can we miss a Dora melanoma, so obvious? Yes, we can if it's hidden from our view. For example, this Dora melanoma on the buttock can be missed if the underwear is not removed. Four millimeter in thickness nodular melanoma. So the approach is to perform a complete skin examination from head to toe. Scalp melanomas are notorious for being diagnosed at a later stage, hence we need to look closely even at the scalp. When we shave off the hair, this becomes a Dory melanoma. Asymmetry of colors, large, an asymmetry of silhouette. With dermoscopy, showing multiple criteria for melanoma. 0.9 millimeters in thickness. We may hope that the patient will bring up these melanomas to our attention, being so obvious. However, there's a pitfall here. The patient may be reluctant to bring up the concerning lesions, even for a long period of time, unless specifically asked. This is denial, as was the case in this melanoma. So the solution is to ask the patient explicitly about any concerning lesions. They are often aware of these melanomas, but would not bring them spontaneously to our attention unless asked about. Let's move on to melanomas of the second level of difficulty. I call these melanomas that are apparent in close inspection, but not obvious from the doorway. We look closely at these lesions with magnifying lens and classically with dermoscopy. Here's an example. There's no doorway melanoma here, but there is a concerning lesion. Can you see it? Here it is. If we look closely, we can see this is a pigmented lesion, hinting that this may be melanocytic. We see an asymmetric silhouette. We see multiple shades of color. With dermoscopy, this lesion shows multiple criteria for melanoma, asymmetry in the distribution of colors and structures. And the structures will include purple streaks, irregular network, and irregular globules. This is a melanoma. 0.45 millimeter in thickness. In the progression model I showed you before, from far away these may look like this, but close up in dermoscopy they become this, more obvious. The pitfall here is if we don't look closely at multiple lesions, we may miss these melanomas. 
every physician that performs full body examination should be able to, perf to identify these melanomas. So which lesions should we look at closely? Any lesion that concerns the patient or significant others on history. Any ugly duckling, meaning a lesion that deviates from the other le patient's lesions. Lesions that fulfill any of the ABCD criteria, asymmetry, border irregularity, color variegation, diameter, and evolution, meaning change. We should look at surgical scars of previous melanomas and neva excisions, as well as some colleagues advocate looking just randomly at multiple lesions, almost the whole body of the patient for dermoscopy, called total body dermoscopy. So we need to be sensitive in picking up any outliers based on history or examination, and then closely at these outliers, clinically and dermoscopically, they may become much more obvious melanomas. Here's an example. This 50-year-old has no history of melanoma. On full body examination, an ugly duckling was seen. Can you pick it up? Here it is, not a Dory melanoma. Let's look closer. Looking closely, we see obvious asymmetry and color variegation with multiple colors asymmetrically distributed. With dermoscopy, this becomes much more obvious. There's irregular distribution of colors and structures, structures that are concerning for melanomas, including peripheral streaks, irregular globules, structural areas, and blue-white veil. Melanoma 0.7 millimeter in thickness. So to conclude part one, Dory melanoma are obvious ugly ducklings fulfilling many of the ABCD criteria. Therefore, they're easy to diagnose even from far. However, they may be missed if overlooked. So the solution is to perform total body examination head to toe and ask the patient about any concerning lesions that he's aware of. The second level of difficulty are close-up melanomas. These are not obvious from the doorways. They're subtle ugly ducklings, deviating somewhat from the other patient lesions. When we look closely at them clinically and neuroscopically, more criteria of melanoma become, a, become apparent, making these more obvious melanomas. However, these melanomas may be missed if we don't look at them closely, clinically and neuroscopically. So the solution is to look closely at multiple lesions, those that concern the patients, those that are ugly ducklings, and show in any of the ABCD criteria. And with that, I conclude part one. Thank you for your attention. I would like to acknowledge the European Commission Marie Curie FP7 grant for supporting my research program. I would also like to thank Ms. Selinger, my research assistant, for helping me prepare this podcast.